Hello everyone, it's that time of year again where I sit down to do the Kanye Madness Bracket. This time I believe, or I think it was even rougher than the other leagues, because we have some new additions from the Ye albums and the uh, Kitsy Ghost albums even too. So there's more to pick from, more drama coming up, and before I get all into all of that I'd like to just introduce the brackets, the people going up against each other, the leagues if you will. You have first the Calabasas League going against the Hawaii League, then you have the Wyoming League going against the Chicago League, obviously representing different periods of artistic expression for Kanye and the different places where he made the albums. Now the first matchup that we're going to see in the Calabasas League is uh, Jesus Walks against Cuddy Montage. I will say personally, I think Cuddy Montage isn't as great as people make it out to be. It's a great song, it's a great vibe, it has some very interesting uh, samples, and it's, it's fun and all, but for me this was an easy pick. Jesus Walks is seated as number one in the league, and Jesus Walks do proceed from that matchup. So then we have Hey Mama vs Roses. I do love both of those tracks, but to me Hey Mama holds a special place in my heart. So that moves on over Roses. Then we have Flashing Lights, Lights versus Real Friends, which is one of the first ones where I really had to pull myself together to pull it off because both of those tracks are some of the tracks I've listened to by Kanye the most. But ultimately, Real Friends wins out because of the raw honesty, the great simplistic, minimalistic, very melancholy beat, and just the very raw Kanye that I know and love and that he often shows a few times on each album. Monster vs. Otis. This was not that hard for me. I think Monster is one of those tracks off of my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which could be um, described as a regular Kanye hip-hop song and not really as groundbreaking as, as the rest of the album, even though it does have an incredible uh, performance by Nicki Minaj and the other contributors on the song. I find it to be uh, middle of the road for Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which is obviously one of the best albums of all time. So for me, Otis wins on just by the incredible uh, Otis Redding sample and Jay-Z contribution. Uh, then we have Spaceship vs. Uh, Spaceship versus We Major, which also just two incredible highlights from his uh, earlier career. And for me, Spaceship wins out because of the emotional connection I have to the song. And in general, just the, the beautiful contribution by everyone involved and the fun gospel inspired hook, which uh, exemplifies what made early Kanye so great. Runaway versus St. Pablo. This was probably the easiest pick for me. Runaway definitely wins this one. Runaway is an incredibly important song in the Kanye catalog for reasons that have been documented many times. It's more or less his apology for his terrible behavior in the late uh, in the late knots, and it's uh, an important song, be it a bit repetitive and not a song that uh, you can listen to uh, on repeat. It's definitely a palate cleanser. It's something that brings out and exemplifies why Kanye was able to, um, uh, in his hit or, you know, make it or break it moment in the music career, he was able to stay relevant and stay on top of his game through my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, despite all the controversy and despite being called out repeatedly and having to apologize. Then we have Last Call versus Never Let Me Down. Another easy one for me, I think uh, Never Let Me Down is, is a, a, a beautiful early Kanye song, a beautiful melody, beautiful refrain, uh, and Last Call is, is also great, but not on the same level at all. Okay, Stronger versus Famous. I had to deliberate over this one a long time because they're both instrumental in making me someone who keeps listening to Kanye's stuff after the early period. I think Stronger is possibly the moment when he legitimized himself as an arena act uh, as opposed to someone who just uh, uh, played smaller venues. And it's one of the first songs where he really emphasized that sing-along thing that uh, he has perfected so much since then but ultimately I picked Famous for this one because it's simply just an incredible track which evolves keeps you interested hooks you in it's controversial it's also somewhat tender uh, beneath everything but it still shows that grandeur that has made Kanye who he is and who we all know him as then then we move on to the Hawaii League now you know what let's finish Calabasas 
Okay, moving on. So we have Jesus Walks going up against Hey Mama in the quarterfinals. And for me, this was, again, an easy one simply because of just the strength and longevity of Jesus Walks. Uh, his, his first gr real moment of, I guess, greatness. So Hey Mama has to, to make way for Jesus Walks in this one, even though Hey Mama is a very special song. Then we have Real Friends going up against Otis, where, again, uh, easy pick for me. Real Friends wins out. It's a, a real great track and a real highlight from that album, and uh, Otis simply doesn't have the depth or the longevity, if you will, of a song like uh, Real Friends, where he bears his soul in a, in a very meaningful way. Uh, then you have Spaceship going up against Runaway. This was, for me, also just a matter of taste, personal opinion, because these two tracks are obviously hugely important and great, and I picked Spaceship for this one, mostly because of the relatability factor and also because of the very, uh, very melodic and beautiful uh, hook which evolves and, uh, and sort of becomes worthy of the, the kind of one-note beat. Then, f finally, we have Never Let Me Down versus Famous, where Famous is obviously the stronger song of the two, and I picked that one. So, the semifinals of that league, or I guess the finals of, yeah, the finals of the Calabasas uh, bracket, we have Jesus Walks going up against Famous. This is a really tough one because they're obviously really hard to compare, but they, they both sort of deal with the same thing in Kanye's mind, which is this sort of... Uh, uh, me versus them attitude that he often pulls out and that he often does find himself in. It seems like every album he makes, he's sort of forced to, uh, he's forced himself into a corner where it's either make it or or break it. Uh, and uh, uh, he pulls through with both of those tracks. And while I think that Famous is definitely a top five song in his catalog, I chose Jesus Walks. Uh, Jesus Walks is also um, uh, you know, um, tipped to be the number one in the league, and it does win. So no surprises there. Pretty straightforward. Jesus Walks was tipped to win, and it does win the Calabasas League. Now, moving on to the Hawaii League, we have first we have the number one seeded uh, Through the Wire going up against I Wonder. And in a major upset, I picked I Wonder over Through the Wire. Now, Through the Wire is considered by many Kanye so uh, fans to be his best song. I disagree. I think it's very similar to the other hip hop that came out at the time. And while it's incredibly impressive that he rapped through a, a broken jaw and the, the, the rhymes are incredible on the song, I'm not denying any of that. I still think I Wonder is a, is a better song. It's, a, it's better produced. It has more of a, a retro, uh, an introspection into his mind. And I think it, it delivers in a way that Through the Wire doesn't over many many re-listens um, and uh, it doesn't evolve with you as you grow up the same way I wonder do. So that's a big upset. Then we have Dark Fantasy going up against Ultralight Beam. Both songs that are incredible and that I've listened to many many times. Uh, I picked Dark Fantasy for the simple reason that I believe it's possibly the best album opener of all time. Uh, it opens my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and it shows his mission statement for not just the album but his entire life and career and it doesn't disappoint in any way so dark fantasy moves on over ultralight beam then we move on to black skinhead versus crack music this is david and goliath in i believe every um matchup that uh that i've seen so far by people doing and obviously black skinhead beats crack music crack music is a fun song but it just doesn't hold up to the magnitude and bravado of black skinhead uh full of paranoia full of uh bravado um again me against the world black skinhead wins easily in this one then you have heartless versus guilt trip going up against each other and in this one i picked the underdog guilt trip to win um, Heartless is a fun song, it's a great single, but it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't have, it's too light to go up against a song that's as, as deep and as, uh, beautiful and experimental as Guilt Trip. Guilt Trip is simply an incredible song, which evolves again, it's kind of prog rock inspired, it has a drum solo, 
it's it's one of the definite highlights off of uh, Yeezus for me and one of those songs again that stuck with me over time and that I will keep going back to from time to time. Okay, then you have Blood on the Leaves versus So Appalled. Uh, easy one for me, Blood on the Leaves. Uh, wins by um, wins, you know, almost in a, a no compete on this one. Blood on the Leaves is possibly my favorite Kanye song, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, then you have uh, I'll talk about that later. Then you have uh, Good Life going up against Family Business, where Good Life wins easily. Good Life is one of the most uh, light and fun, and uh, um, I guess. It's probably the song of his in his early career that's most likely to get stuck in your ear and not for the wrong reasons. You're not going to hate yourself for singing along to this song again and again. It's just a great pop hip hop song that is is really emblematic of the time that he was going through at the time when he was making Graduation and it's just a fun song and it has for me and many others of my uh, generation and who were born around the time that I was, it's been a song that you could grow up alongside to and uh, project your own uh, aspirations onto in a fun way. And T-Pain does a great job on the song, so good life moves on. Moving on, uh, Gorgeous goes up against No More Parties in LA. I pick Gorgeous. No More Parties in LA is, uh, is fun, but Gorgeous is unbelievable. It has a great contribution by Kit Cudi, and it beats No Parties in LA. Then you have All Falls Down versus Homecoming. In the final matchup in the Hawaii bracket and for this one uh, while it was tough I picked all falls down I don't think homecoming has held up the best on gr the graduation album I think all falls down sounds way more classic and way more meaningful than um, than uh, homecoming does and it, um, everything that homecoming tries to do good life does better in my opinion so there you have it okay Moving on to the quarterfinals, you have I Wonder going up against Dark Fantasy, which is a really tough one and uh, is, is a pick that I struggled with for a long time. I ended up going with I Wonder over Dark Fantasy. This was, like I said, really rough, uh, and this is a great showing by I Wonder, which is seated as the very last um, pick of the, of the bracket. Um, I think I Wonder is just a beautiful song. It's really um, great and it's melancholy. It doesn't evolve into, or I guess you could say devolve into self-pity, but it's still an examination, a rare examination of the mind of Kanye uh, on a, an otherwise happy album, poppy, fun album. Uh, he, he kind of turns introspective over this beautiful beat in I Wonder, so that beats Dark Fantasy, despite Dark Fantasy being possibly one of my favorite songs of his. It's tough saying bye to Dark Fantasy this early on, but um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. That's a lame frame. That's a lame phrase. Anyway, then you have Black Skinhead going up against Guilt Trip. This was possibly the hardest choice that I faced here, because both of those songs are unbelievable, and both of those songs are songs that are in my top 25 most listened to on Apple Music. So I had to really ask myself why I liked both of those songs, and um, I guess I decided on Black Skinhead moving ahead simply because it's a more powerful song. It's a song that's both incredibly meaningful to Kanye fans, but also to people who aren't Kanye fans necessarily. It's used often in movies, TV shows, commercials. It's a song that everyone's acquainted with, and um, for once, in an artist's uh, career, it's a song that deserves it as well. It's It has a beautiful composition, beautiful production. Every line in the song seems meaningful, and it's, it's just a great song that I'm sure Kanye would be proud of if he was remembered for that one song and that one song alone. Moving on, you have Blood on the Leaves versus Good Life, where I've, um, again, this, this was, this wasn't a, a, a rough choice necessarily, but this was, Two songs I really love going up against each other, uh, again, very early on. I ended up going with Blood on the Leaves because, I mean, it is Blood on the Leaves. But Good Life does hold a very special place in my heart as well, so uh, it was a, a, a tough call here. But uh, yeah, ultimately Blood on the Leaves does beat Good Life. Then you have Gorgeous going up against All Falls Down. Uh, and in that case, All Falls Down just has more weight to it. It has more meaning. So All Falls Down does beat Gorgeous, despite the great production and contributions by Kid Cudi and others on Gorgeous. 
So moving on, we have uh, in the semifinals, you have I Wonder going up against Black Skinhead. While I Wonder, I've praised it a lot. It's a great song. It doesn't have the uh, gravitas of Black Skinhead. So Black Skinhead moves along here by a pretty easy defeat. Then you have Blood on the Leaves in the other semifinal. Blood on the Leaves going up against All Falls Down. And in this one, for the same reasons, it um, All Falls Down, great, incredible song, but it doesn't have the gravitas and the incredible production that uh, Blood on the Leaves does. So Blood on the Leaves moves ahead here. In the finals of this bracket, you have Black Skinhead going up against Blood on the Leaves and Blood on the Leaves does beat um, Black Skinhead. Now, going on to the finals uh, of um, the Hawaii versus Calabasas League, this means that we are seeing a Jesus Walks versus Blood on the Leaves showdown. Uh, Jesus Walks has, was tipped as number one to win from the Calabasas League, and Blood on the Leaves was tipped sixth. So it might seem surprising that I'm picking Blood on the Leaves, but hear me out. Jesus Walks is potentially one of the best hip-hop songs of all time, but Blood on the Leaves, the reason I haven't talked much about it is because I wanted to take this chance to justify my pick over Jesus Walks, and that is that uh, not only does it have a, a, the, a sample of possibly one of the most important social songs of all time, uh, Nina Simone's um, Strange Fruit, it also really shows you where Kanye's mind is at as an artist in a beautiful way. It legitimized culturally the use of auto-tune in a way that wasn't to make up for flaws, but as a way to seem distant and distanced emotionally from what you were singing. And just as this harrowing technique where you can show your emotionality through this robotic technological framework of autotune as an instrument. So the winner of the Calabasas versus Hawaii League is Blood on the Leaves. I really can't say enough good, good things about it. So in the finals, we have our first song, Blood on the Leaves. Moving on to Wyoming and Chicago. First off, in the Wyoming um, uh, matchup, you have Power versus Ghost Town. Interestingly, I think Ghost Town is tipped as the very last song that's uh, thought to win. I think Ghost Town is an amazing song, um, but the reason that it's probably tipped last is because it's starting out against Power, which is one of those songs that, like Blood on the Leaves and like Jesus Walks and like Famous, it exemplifies who Kanye is uh, over a beat that's so unusual that at the time people didn't understand that he would use it over a King Crimson song. Um, but he really brings out the best of his talent and the best of his ability on this incredibly produced, beautiful, lush track and makes possibly the best, you could argue it's the best song of his career, singing about everything from his own bravado to suicidal ideation to what it means to be a celebrity in modern culture. And of course, power has to beat Ghost Town. Uh, I think Ghost Town was done dirty by this because it is one of the highlights of Kanye's later career. Uh, so power moves on. Then you have uh, Good Morning versus Hold My Liquor. Good Morning is a fun song. It mostly centers around Kanye's disdain for the normal life and the struggles that you have to go through and how going to college doesn't necessarily mean that you learn anything or that you get qualified to do anything, which is a theme that runs through his first three albums heavily. I don't personally think it's one of the best songs on graduation, so but but I do think that Hold My Liquor is one of the most underrated songs off of the Yeezus album. And uh, for me, Hold My Liquor beats Good Morning pretty easily and very soundly. Then we have We Don't Care versus Lost in the World. We Don't Care was a romp, a great fun way to open uh, an album about feeling alienated in the world and feeling like the education system doesn't uh, value you if you're a minority, uh, cloaked in this joke format of uh, students singing to a teacher that they don't care what anyone says, they're gonna deal drugs because the system doesn't care about us anyway. 
But speaking of system doesn't care about us, Lost in the World, I think, is a much more mature look into what it means to be truly lost in the world and feeling alone as this person who's perceived to have it all, but still struggles with the same things that everyone else struggles with, uh, only under constant observation from the world. It has a beautiful contribution by Bon Iver, who uh, sings along with the song, but opens it also with his own song, Woods, put into this new context, and it really adds a lot both to that song and to um, Lost in the World and the My Beautiful Dark Twisted, Twisted Fantasy song uh, album in general. Then you have Slow Jams going up against Hell of a Life, both songs that for me are kind of okay, but ultimately Slow Jams beats Hell of a Life. It's just a great early Kanye song. Then we have Father Stretch My Hands against Welcome to Heartbreak, and no surprise there, I chose Father Stretch My Hands. Uh, Welcome to Heartbreak has a lot going for it, it has a beautiful contribution by Kid Cudi, as a lot of 808s and Heartbreak does, but Father Stretch My Hands also has that, and it has a beautiful, lush, sort of a uh, feel-good melody to it, and then ended by brutally great and on-point rapping in the in the second part of the song. So, Father Stretch My Hands definitely moves on in that um, in in that in that uh, matchup. Then we have uh, N Words in Paris versus Say You Will, and this is one of those where I probably will get a lot of flack if uh, any uh, big-time Kanye fans ends up listening to this. Uh, I picked Say You Will because I think it is one of the more jarring openings to an album that I've heard in hip-hop history. And it's it has a lot going for it. And I think it's really underrated just for how beautiful the choir is and the instrumentation and the sparseness. It feels you're, like you're listening to Autumn in a song. It feels It does feel like heartbreak when you listen to it. There's just no warmth in the song whatsoever. It's just a stripped-down... A uh, broken man singing uh, about abandonment and about um, about being abandoned and feeling like you're all alone. And for me, it's a real career highlight from from Kanye and a beautiful, great way to open 808s and Heartbreak. So, no um, no bad words or ill intentions to N Words in Paris, but it just doesn't hold up to the sincerity and beauty of Say You Will. Then you have Devil in a New Dress going up against New Slaves. Devil in a New Dress takes it. New Slaves is incredible. It's rough. It's like listening to a very uh, aggressive uh, speech by someone who's been wronged by the system and who needs and, and has to let you know how fucked up everything is. And fucked up everything truly is. Um, I think Devil in a New Dress, just by its pure lushness and confidence and unbelievable contribution by Rick Ross, takes it. Even though the message in New Slaves is important and I think good, Devil in a New Dress simply beats it out. Then we move on to an easy one for me, uh, Diamonds from Sierra Leone remix with contribution by Jay-Z versus The Glory. Uh, Jay-Z uh, and uh, the incredible sampling by Kanye definitely beats out Glory. Uh, Diamond's remix moves on. Okay, moving on to the semifinals of the Wyoming League. We have Power going up against Hold My Liquor. This was really tough for me because both of those songs are really, uh, you know, close and uh, near and dear to my heart. But ultimately, the pure uh, magnitude and enigmatic nature of Power beats out Hold My Liquor for its more understated um, understated uh, symbolism. Then you have Lost in the World going up against Slow Jams, and for me, Lost in the World beats Slow Jams easily. Slow Jams is a fun song, but Lost in the World is just that much more powerful. Father Stretch My Hands goes up against Say You Will. Father Stretch My Hands takes it pretty easily. Say You Will is a great album opener, but in a less abstract, more practical way, Father Stretch My Hands is just a better song. It has a lot more going for it. Everything from the, the great rapping and the, the, the feel-good beat that turns into kind of a nightmare in part two. It's just a great, a great, great song. And finally, we have Devil in a New Dress going up against uh, Sierra, Diamonds from Sierra Leone. And in a huge upset, I picked Devil in a New Dress. 
this is definitely the underdog beating a favorite of many people. Uh, and again, a situation where I would probably get into trouble if a true fan found out. Again, for all the reasons mentioned before, Devil in a New Dress is just uh, an incredible song. I think it's very underrated. Uh, enough said about it. Um, then you have um, in the semifinals, Power going up against Lost in the World. Uh, for his greatest Lost in the World is, it simply can't beat the magnitude of Power, so Power moves on. And then you have Father Stretch My Hands going up against Devil in a New Dress, where Devil in a New Dress does end up beating Father Stretch My Hands. I told you, I'm a sucker for Devil in a New Dress. I think it's lush, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it does beat the more laid back uh, Father Stretch My Hands in this case. So yeah, the finals of this bracket is Power versus Devil in a New Dress. Again, Power. Power beats it. It is possibly the best Kanye song, and um, they're just two of the most incredible highlights off of my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, where Power simply just edges out Devil in a New Dress. Moving on to the Chicago bracket, final bracket of the four. Gold Digger versus uh, 30 Hours. Naturally, it has to be Gold Digger. There's just no question about it. 30 Hours is a fun song, but Gold Digger is, again, one of those songs universally considered to be his best. So Gold Digger, with its beat, with its contribution by Jamie Foxx, with its recognizability, uh, incredible crossover potential, it beats out 30 Hours easily. Then you have Lock, Lock, Love Lockdown versus Streetlights, where... In a minor upset, I guess, I picked Streetlights. Streetlights is, I think, um, I don't think it's controversial to say that it probably influenced rap more than any song since Run DMC influenced rappers from the 90s, uh, in the 80s. It's, it's a song that most new rappers will credit as the song that turned them on to melancholy rap and melodic rap and uh, gave them the courage to start singing in general. Uh, and it is one of my favorite songs of all time. That's no you know, spoiler to say. So, Streetlights beats lo lo uh, Lockdown. Moving on, Champion versus Wolves. Uh, I picked Wolves. Champion is the clear favorite, but it was never my favorite off of uh, Graduation. I think Wolves is a much stronger track with a stronger message and a stronger um, stronger moral too. It's, it's many, many Kanye fans credits is, as being one of the best songs he ever made. And I agree. Um, yeah, give it a, give it a re-listen. I think that's one of the songs from Pablo that deserves retroactive appreciation for sure. Touch the Sky goes up against Waves. No surprise here. The favorite um, uh, Touch the Sky beats Waves. Waves is a fun song, it's a great song. Um, a big segment of the Kanye fan base will say it's his best song. I disagree, I don't think it's that great. Uh, Touch the Sky is, however, a very... Um, how do you want to put it? It's very um, characteristic of early Kanye and the happiness that came with him finally succeeding after years of, and years of working as a producer, being told he couldn't. And it's just a fun song with the great melody and trumpets. And yes, Touch the Sky Beats Waves. Uh, Amazing goes up against Everything I Am. And in yet another upset, I picked Everything I Am. I think Everything I Am is like, um, like I wonder, a, a beautiful moment off of graduation, a moment where you get a chance to get into the, the mind of Kanye, reflecting on how he got there and uh, absolutely worth a re-listen again, uh, along with the rest of Graduation, I think. Then you have All of the Lights going up against Paranoid. And this was really tough for me because All of the Lights is, it's one of his most audacious songs of all time. And that's not saying much. It features everyone from Rihanna to Elton John. And it's a song that has everyone sing that knows it singing along to it as soon as it comes on. Uh, still, though, I pick Paranoid. I think Paranoid is an incredibly effective, good, uh, grounded, sad song that, you know, takes the sadness and turns it into an incredible hook. You're worried about the wrong things, the wrong things. It's beautiful. It influenced rap. It's just wonderful. 
Then we have Bound 2 going up against uh, Drive Slow, where the love song uh, Bound 2 wins out for me. It's Kanye struggling with sounding romantic, um, but the beat itself, the message, uh, and the, the, the true love he feels, which you can't tell from the song, does win out in the end. And uh, Bound 2 is a classic of his and uh, widely mocked, but also a really, really great song with just incredible chorus vocals by Charlie Wilson. Finally, we have Can't Tell Me Nothing going up against uh, Blame Game, where the uh, big favorite Can't Tell Me Nothing has to win. Uh, great song. Simply put, I think Blame Game is half of a great song, but I think the Chris Rock cameo or whatever you want to call it at the end is a bit cartoony. And I don't really look at someone like uh, Chris Rock as someone who's that intimidating. I think his reputation for being a comedian kind of ruins that for me. If someone else had done it, maybe it would have been more intimidating for me personally. It would have been more effective, but uh, it's still a great song and still uh, has that kind of 808's mood that um, that I enjoy, but it just it isn't as effective as I would have liked it to have been. Semi-finals time. Okay. Uh, um, we have Gold Digger going up against Streetlights. Um, and for me, despite, I mean, I feel like this requires a lot of justification, but uh, I picked Streetlights over Gold Digger simply again because of the immense importance uh, of Streetlights and just enjoying the hell out of the song in general. I think it is very prophetic. Uh, is that a, no, a pro? Uh, was a prophetic right it's it's like a prophecy anyway that's what i was trying to say it's it's uh visionary it's beautiful it's melodic it's sad but it's not you know it's not dwelling on his own melancholy it's just a reflection of where he was as a person at the time and i think it is a career highlight for him and it's been horribly underrated by fans and critics alike so Streetlights does beat Gold Digger, which is an absolute classic, of course, but doesn't have the, the depth or the personality of a lot of uh, Kanye songs, I think, personally. Now you're free to crucify me. So, Wolves goes up against Touch the Sky. Um, easy matchup for me. Touch the Sky wins this one. It's just a fun song, a great song. Uh, and it, it, of course it beats Wolves. Of course it beats Wolves. Then you have Everything I Am going up against Paranoid. And despite the greatness of everything I am, Paranoid is just a hookier song. It's a more fun song. It's a more upbeat song. It has more going for it um, in its production. And uh, yeah, Paranoid wins out on, in this one. Bound 2 up against uh, Can't Tell Me Nothing is the fi uh, final song of the semifinals. And the favorite loses once again. <laughs> Bound 2 beats Can't Tell Me Nothing. Bound 2 is just more meaningful. It has more... It has more soul. Is is a bit pretentious to say, but it does. It shows a side of Kanye you don't see often, which is Kanye in a, a sincerely romantic mood, struggling with trying to be um, sensitive in his music. Um, not always succeeding in the song, but definitely trying something new and taking a risk in showing a, a softer side of himself to the public. So, uh, semi-finals, Streetlights up against Touch the Sky. I decided to say fuck everything and just pick Streetlights again um, for all the reasons that I've mentioned before. Touch the Sky is unbelievable, but it, it doesn't hold the prophetic uh, nature that Streetlights does or the, the instant uh, brain worm effect of uh, of streetlights for me personally, and the fine the final semifinal paranoid up against bound two paranoid wins, the ultimate underdog story here. We have two songs from 808s that move on to the finals. Streetlights up against paranoid, and for the greatness of paranoid, streetlights has to win it. I don't think I need to explain more about why I like streetlights. So the final finals. Uh, Wyoming versus Chicago. We have power going up against streetlights. This was really tough for me, but I ended up going with power. Why? Because power is 
possibly, like I said, his best song. It has all of these things that had been that had led up to this point in his career all in one. It has the tenderness of 808s, it has the grandeur of his earlier stuff, and it has the incredible production, this out of, you know, uh out of this world beauty and power and rawness and aggressiveness that um that is that that was very much needed at the time in music and that still holds up and still sounds fresh when you listen to it today so we have arrived 36 minutes but we have arrived at the finals of this thing blood on the leaves versus power what can you say about these two songs i mean blood on the leaves and power are very different songs in terms of mood in terms of production in terms of purpose they are just at the opposite side of the spectrum blood on the leaves is a a kind of stripped down minimalistic aggressive yet vulnerable song which uh you hear a lot of on yeezus where he's sort of re-examining his life and he needs to move out of the shadow of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and he asks people to come into the studio with the only purpose of removing instruments from his songs to make them more minimal to make them sound more aggressive more immediate and um you hear that in many sections on blood on the leaves like in the middle of the song when every other element of the song just disappears to have these aggressive King Kong sounding uh, synth sounds blare you right into your ears, uh, almost like air horns. It's an incredibly effective song and it's beautiful. And on the other hand, you have Power, which is him at the, you know, make it or break it point of his career where he has to put on a big show a big extravagant beautiful song where he talks about the nature of celebrity and how you know quoting uh racist politicians saying no one man should have all that power about martin luther king uh to 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 reflect on celebrity it's a very smart song and it shows you that this beautiful reflection you get in tabloids on the news on the radio about what celebrity is isn't the whole side of the story and ending in this tragic phrasing of uh you know this could be a beautiful death jumping out the window trying to escape this image that the media has built up about him and this narrative and you know making something new for yourself through suicide is just very hard to listen to but it makes for a beautiful song and it makes for a uh, uh, an incredibly effective mission statement for my beautiful dark twisted fantasy which is probably his best album artistically uh next to yeezus in my mind but ultimately after deliberating for a long time i chose blood on the leaves blood on the leaves is possibly the best hip-hop song of all time and that is i think the the right winner of this very very rough and hard bracket tournament this year so congratulations blood on the leaves go listen to it right now thank you so much for listening to this sticking all the way through i hope you've done the bracket yourself if you haven't find the the template on the kanye reddit's uh forums and get to it because i'm sure that you'll have a different winner i've seen a lot of people have chosen ghost town as their favorite which is also a great song but to me i just can't beat out the magnitude of power uh both as a fan and also just culturally and for you know showing who kanye really is so if you've listened to this which you have if you're hearing this right now tell me which song you picked as the winner and let's hope that uh we get much more great kanye music in the future thank you for listening and bye blood on the leaves wins <laughs>